Hi, and welcome to another edition of On Call with Dr. Rob. I'm Dr. Rob Epstein. Biologics have become an increasingly important part of therapy for the treatment of many different diseases. Biosimilars are medicines that are being developed that are similar to, but not quite the same thing as a biologic. And now that the FDA has the authority from the recently passed healthcare law to implement a regulatory pathway for these biosimilars, I sat down with Dr. Janet Woodcock, co-chair of the FDA's Biosimilar Implementation Committee, to discuss the issues and the challenges in bringing them to the market. There hasn't really been a pathway to bring the, the, the biosimilars to the market. How come? Well, we're very proud of our generic program, which we think has saved consumers billions of dollars. But they were approved under one uh, law, and all the biologics were approved under a different law. That law never had a generic pathway. So very recently, Congress passed into law a pathway for drugs that were approved as biologicals to have copies produced. So why is it important that FDA get a regulatory pathway in place? Today, the biologics are the fastest growing portion of the prescription benefit. In fact, it's projected by the year 2020 that specialty drugs will represent 40% of the spend in the prescription benefit. Our own Steve Russick explains. Between now and the year 2020, there are 46 biologics that will lose patent protection. And with a biosimilar pathway, this represents a potential of a $42 billion savings. There are many issues under debate when it comes to biosimilars. One area of controversy is around interchangeability. That is, when would a biosimilar be safe and effective to be substitutable, much like we do generic drugs today? Dr. Mark Haney, a practicing physician at Memorial Sloan Kettering has cause for concern. I think that biosimilars can be considered interchangeable with the branded drugs that preceded them. The real question is whether they're purified in the same way and whether as a result of the way they're made, they retain all the potency that the original drug has. Well, the new law on biosimilars has basically two tiers. One is basically a finding of biosimilarity. There's a higher level of evidence required if the FDA were to make a finding of what's called interchangeability, whereby the products could be switched at the pharmacy level. And there's standards written into the statute about what FDA would have to find before two products would be determined to be interchangeable. Another area of controversy is around the safety standards to which biosimilars will be held by the FDA. How similar is similar enough for the FDA to approve them as safe and effective? We'll be seeing clinical data, some clinical data. It'll be an abbreviated package, but it won't be like a generic. It won't be that you simply do the characterization, you know it's the same molecule, and then you do bioequivalence study to prove that the rate and extent of absorption is the same, and then you stop. It will be a much, much more thorough evaluation necessary for the biosimilars. We use these drugs to cure people, and so it's really important to make sure that they work as well, because anything that compromises that really compromises our, our chance to give patients the best outcome. We're very focused on making sure that we have good post-marketing follow-up so that we understand the consequences of all this and how it's evolving in the market. Cost is another area of controversy. The hope for biosimilars is that these innovative medications will cost less by bringing increased competition into the marketplace. But how will biosimilars be effective in reducing the costs for the payers? The biologicals are really some of the most expensive drugs we use. If we can find a way to give the same quality of care at a lower cost, then I think everyone wins. Multiple sclerosis is approximately a $30,000 a year therapy is covering the biologic. If you do that math, 20% of $30,000 is $6,000. So the range is between six dollars and $9,000 per year per multiple sclerosis patient that would use a biosimilar. With biotech drugs being the fastest growing drug category in the next five years, and the FDA actively drafting a regulatory pathway, how should payers be thinking about their plan design in relation to biosimilars? Biosimilars need to be recognized in the plan design, and as we learn more from the FDA guidance of what this pathway is going to look like and some of the issues around interchangeability, the, then we can start to include some of the tools and techniques that have been very successful with generics in bringing down the cost, uh, in this case, of the biologics. 
we need to hear the concerns and issues for the payer community. So I know that's hard because it's very complex, but the more engagement the community has, the more chance that their concerns and their voice is heard as we uh, implement this statute. We have touched on many of the major controversies around biosimilars in terms of their safety, the complexity of ensuring interchangeability, and the issue of cost. After listening to the clinicians and the FDA, a regulatory process will be a reality, and biosimilars will be available in the marketplace in the next few years. It's an exciting time of innovation, and we'll be sure to follow up once the guidances are issued. Well, that's it for this episode of On Call. From all of us here at the Medco Broadcast Center, thank you so much for joining us, and take good care.